is Cranford. Just a couple of months, and you had better be ready. Well, that actually happened to a Minneapolis man. Yeah, he's going to the Olympics. Uh, Roman joins us now. Thank you so much, Roman Kress from South Minneapolis. Yes. You're going to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, it's a very exciting day. Uh, I would say so. <laughs> Uh, can you tell us our story? I mean, tell us about the road to the Olympics. Well, uh, back in 1999, I had a B standard qualifying time of 10:39. Uh, the Marshall Islands wasn't a uh, we weren't recognized by the IOC as an Olympic uh, federation yet. So um, we were denied in 2000, and uh, what was it, Australia, and in 2004 the same thing. I think it's important that we mention you are going to the Olympics for Marshall Islands. Yes. Can you tell us uh, your mom is from Marshall Islands? Yep, my mom's from Marshall Islands. And your dad was in the Peace Corps? Yep, he's from Austin, Minnesota. Oh, okay. <laughs> so is that how, why you, when, how old were you when you moved to Minnesota? Uh, about 10 months old. Okay. So I've been here since. Well, where the heck are the Marshall Islands? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. It's about five hours southwest by plane from Hawaii. Okay. So it's in the middle of nowhere. But the Marshall, <laughs> the Marshall Islands for you is, is there's not a, you know, you moved when you were 10 months old, but there's not a total disconnect there. You've had a connection to the Marshall Islands your entire life, right? Yeah, I've been back, uh, usually every three or four years, I've been back with my, either my mother or recently when I was in college, they sent me out there for competition. So I've been back and forth. I haven't been back since uh, 2005, I believe, was my last time out there. So. Does it feel like home when you're there, though? Oh, yeah. It's home for me. Yeah. I just got to convince my wife that, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you are participating for the Marshall Islands, but, but we should talk about the reason why. This is going to be the first time that the Marshall Islands are in the Olympics. And uh, why is that? Uh, why, why, what has the struggle been to get the Marshall Islands part of the Olympics? Because I know you've been part of that process. Five sports recognized, um, which I think by the time I came around, it was only two. And track and field was going to be the third. So. Within the last eight years, it's been, they got two or th maybe even more. I think they have more than five now. So just having five sports recognized by the IOC, and now we got membership now, so whoopee. <laughs> yeah, there's a look at you. How long have you been running it? Is this you in college, I believe? Yep, this is uh, back in 2002 at the uh, Mayak Championships. Uh, I think it was in Gustavus, and that was in, back in 2000. That's um, that's at the indoor Mike championships. You look John. in shape. Yeah, I was back then. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're running for St. Thomas. Now, yep. here, here's the really interesting part of the whole deal, though. Uh, you kind of are almost feeling like you're, you're getting into the, the Olympics here a little too late, maybe not at your peak. Oh, definitely not at my peak. I've been sitting around probably since 06. So, I mean, I keep in somewhat shape just going to the gym and just, you know, doing basic stuff. But in terms of training at an Olympic level, nowhere near. Nowhere near. So, so how do you feel then about participating in the Olympics? Because this is different from the United States qualifying. I mean, you exactly. basically got a call and said you're going. Yeah. So how do you feel about about now running in the Olympics, but maybe not being at your peak? Um, I was. I told a reporter in an article that was written last week. I just didn't feel like I deserved it at this point in my life. I I felt like I deserved it back in '99, 2000. At this point, no, because there's many other athletes out there that do deserve it, especially in the United States alone. That can run as fast as me right now. I mean, I don't know what I have left in the tank, but we'll, we'll see. I have two and a half months, so anything's possible. What do you have to do to train for the Olympics? I've never, I mean, I can tell you, I've never had to train for the Olympics. <laughs> so what it, do you it's do? different. It's not like boxing or any other type of sports. Track and field, you can only be on the track so much, and you don't have much time. So I could probably spend no more than three days a week. So I'm going to do the, as best as I can. Anything else, train. In between that time, it's more cross-training and more just kind of stay in balance because you can't sprint every day. It's going to mess up your nervous system. I'm just trying to get a grasp here because it's, it, it, what are you expecting out of, out of the experience? What are you, what are, do you, do you expect to be able to compete? Are you going for fun? <laughs> or, I mean, I would go in a heartbeat. I mean, I'm just saying that, that, that are, you, are you expecting, like when you, when you train, you're not one of the favorites by no. any stretch. So are you training going, I think I can win this? Or are you training just to do the very best you can? I have to, I have, to have that mentality that I can win this, mm -hmm. even though it might not be realistic. I'm a very realistic person, so sure. it's hard for me to look at it that way. But that's the only way I can look at it, because I'm human, they're human. So anything is possible. You know, we'll just see what happens. I'm going to try my best. And you know, I have two and a half months to do everything I can financially to get myself in the, the place where I need to be huh. to compete at my best. Do your coworkers believe you? 
<laughs> I'm going to the Olympics. I don't think yeah, I gotta me. take a couple weeks off. I, I haven't told many people. I just don't, just a select few because I I, just, I feel like I'm bragging in a sense. So I, I I come from a past of being very prideful and arrogant. So I'm just kind of being on the low low right now. So yeah, because you work at a middle school, right? Junior high. Junior high school. And uh, we called it middle school when I was in those grades. <laughs> <laughs> but you work at a local junior high school. What do the students think about this? Not many students, no. Just, just a couple track athletes and not many kids I've, I haven't told. Well, those track athletes better listen up when you give them a little <laughs> advice now. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so what other question? Are you more proud of going to the Olympics on a personal level or do you think it's um, kind of representing your home away from home? Dep definitely representing the Marshall Islands is the key focus right now. I'm not looking in definitely from a personal perspective. Definitely represent the Marshall Islands and I'm hope hopefully I can do my best for the Marshall Islands. And, and that's where the Marshall Islands are right there. We can see kind of between yeah. China and Australia. And here's the other exciting part for Roman is there's a strong possibility you could be the one carrying the flag oh. for the Marshall Islands. It's a possibility. Which is a huge honor. What would that mean to you? It would mean a lot. Yeah. It would mean a lot. Especially you mean this for the first time being there for the Marshall Islands and you know hopefully you know it'd be just be a great experience and definitely for the rest of my life I can always tell my children and they can tell their children what know. even just to walk in that parade exactly it's gonna be like 92,000 93,000 people in that stadium the goosebumps the <laughs> goosebumps I'm telling you that's very very exciting yeah. awesome stuff Roman congratulations and Best of luck to you. Thank yeah. you. Thank what you. What an so much. amazing story. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. We appreciate it. Very cool. Uh, later on on Twin Cities Live, uh, we're going to give you a super bargain. We're going to give you a really great way to save money at a really great local spot. Yeah, your belly better be ready for this one. But coming up next, recognizing stroke symptoms. You probably know the symptoms of a heart attack, but do you know the symptoms of a stroke? Every second counts, and we're going to learn those symptoms coming up. America, we want to know, how do you like your Dorothy? On chicken, salads, pasta, and wings. With veggies, stir fry, so many great things. You grill it, chill it, mix it, and baste. Give it a toss it. 